Hi guys, and today we're doing a review of the 2021 Range Rover Velar. We're actually here with Land Rover today to look at a couple of cars. This is the latest uh, Velar. Really not too many changes. There's a few tweaks on the inside and outside, but really here to look at two engine choices. Now this one is a diesel. This is an inline six cylinder, three liter diesel, and it's actually the D300 MHEV. So it's a mild hybrid electric vehicle. So it gets a little bit of help from the uh, 48 volt battery. Um, the, we're gonna drive it on road and off road, uh, this one, but also on road, we're gonna have a go at the one that I'm really looking forward to trying, which is the petrol version. That's the, uh, P400E and that's a PHEV so that's a plug-in electric hybrid car and that gives you nearly 400 horsepower uh, 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds and that's a car that's an engine that I tried in another car recently and I really enjoyed so I'm really looking forward to trying that on the road I'm not really going to look too much at the practicality and stuff on this car because this car has been out a while and I have done a review on this before on my previous channel at Motoring Middle East so I'll put the link of that in the description below whatever really the thing to do is to take it for a drive and that's what we're going to do before we do that make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy follow me on browncarguy.com and of course on all the social media channels there's facebook instagram twitter and even tiktok just follow my hashtag which is hashtag brown car guy cool let's get into this I know I said we wouldn't bother to look at the practicality, but you know what? I thought, let's just get in the back of the car and see what it's like. And uh, there's an armrest. I love this uh, this trimming in this car. The leather, the blue leather upholstery on the car. Uh, vents down there, heated seats at the back here, and power supply. There you go. No USB, but instead you get heated seats, which are quite handy. This driver's seat is set for me, because I've just been driving this car. And look how much room I've got. So that's actually really good. So again, another reason why I really like the Velar, because honestly, I mean, it's about as practical as you need. I mean, with this panoramic roof, I've got loads of headroom, plenty of elbow room, Isofix chassis anchor points, and loads of room down here and loads of room here. This is really good. And that's my driving position. It's the one to get. the uh, diesel Velar a go. This is a three liter inline six cylinder ingenium diesel eight speed automatic zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. It's not bad for a diesel, is it? Um, and top speed of 144 miles per hour fuel consumption, um, which you might be interested in is up to 38.2 miles per gallon. Let's just take it for a run. Now I've got it in a uh, dynamic mode and I've got it in the sports for the gearbox. And uh, I will just say that Velars are actually probably my favorite current cars in the Range Rover um, range, in a Range Rover range, in the Range Rover lineup. Um, I do like the Velar. I like the way it looks. I like the way uh, the size of it. I think it's just about right. It's not too big, not too small. It's comfortable. It's uh, easy to handle around town as well as out here. And this is where it comes into its own a little bit, actually, to be honest. There's a little bit of a more of a, a hot hatchy version of a Range Rover, um, that sort of thing. And even in this diesel version, you know, it is quite extraordinary how good it actually is and how eager it is and how quick it is now the only thing is now i've got it in the sports mode and i was earlier tempted to use it uh with the paddles because the pedals are right here but the only thing about the diesel is that it runs out of revs at just uh, over 4,000 rpm and really it, you know you need to understand it a little bit so you need to drive it a little bit to really understand where it does its best work so you see it's changing up at uh just over 4,000 RPM. I think it was nearly four and a half then at that point, just short of four and a half thousand as it accelerated. But it feels pretty quick and it feels pretty agile. And, um, you know, when it comes to the Range Rover lineup, um, I think that uh, potentially the Sport also feels like this, but this one feels really settled. You know, it feels really planted, really settled, and uh, it feels like more of a, a road SUV type thing. Although, you know, as we'll see later on, 
uh, you know, it can do pretty good business when it comes to the off-road environment as well. But it thrives in an on-road environment and it thrives in an urban environment as well. And it kind of thrives when you come out and you find, you know, twisty little roads like this. Um, where you know the steering response is pretty good i mean we're not talking a lot of feel here but the brakes are good the acceleration is good and it's actually really uh, quite a surprisingly entertaining drive particularly considering that it is um, a diesel version to be honest even the engine noise you don't really notice that it's a diesel the only real giveaway like i said um that this is a diesel is that how quickly you know you get up to the revs and you know it kind of runs out revs you know basically so aside from that um, yeah, this is quite a sporty uh, car in the range and I think it underlines or it continues to underline the fact that the Velar lives as my favorite um, in the Range Rover lineup, um, even in diesel form. Now, I'm not really recommending that you go out and buy the diesel, although diesels are probably the best and the cleanest that they've ever been. Um, but really, you know, the interest in diesels is running very, very low right now. So um, not only in the Middle East market, but even in Europe and in other places, um, because particularly in the UK, because the backlash against uh, diesel pollutions uh, perceived or otherwise, like I said, they're cleaner now than they've ever been. So uh, it's a little bit unfair now. So now that they've actually got diesels right, now that they've actually got them working exactly as they should, people are going off them. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's life for you, isn't it? Um, but other than that, this is a, a, an astonishingly uh, fun car and an astonishingly satisfying car. Um, aside from that, in here, it's very familiar. You know, if you've driven a Velar before, which I have, it all feels very familiar. I mean, I, I think there are some changes, but the only thing I really notice is the gear shift, which now is becoming common to, uh, you know, the other Range Rovers and also even in the Jaguar SUV range as well, they've got this treatment, um, which is this kind of stubby lever, which actually feels quite nice to hold. Although sometimes it's a bit tricky to get into, like if you want to get into neutral and stuff like that, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to figure that out. But other than that, um, it's pretty good. Um, other than that, it's, this remains as it was before, as far as I can tell, with a screen down here and a screen up here, which you can tilt adjust to how you want it, which is ideal, whatever angle is ideal for you. Um, and then you've got all the modes down here, the sports uh, dynamic, they call it, uh, eco, and then all the off-roading modes down here as well. Touch buttons on the steering, like before, remain gloss black uh, on this version, on, on the on the Villar. And, um, Otherwise, it's a really nice place to be. Uh, the, the sill is a bit too high for your elbow, but you can hold it down here. Um, and you kind of, you're sitting inside this Range Rover. So this Range Rover feels a little bit different compared to others where you're sitting, where you feel like you're sitting on a throne, you're sitting on the Range Rover. But in this one, you actually, you're sitting in it. So that's why I say this is like the hot hatch of Range Rovers. This is essentially what this is. So here we are, of course, a little bit of off-roading. Like I said, this being, uh, Range Rover or Land Rover, if you ever come up to their events, uh, particularly if it's near the Land Rover experience in uh, East Nor, which is where this is today, <laughs> then inevitably there'll be a little bit of off-roading. And you would think, why would you take your very expensive and posh uh, Villar, um, which, uh, you know, which I've already said is a bit like a hot hatch in the Range Rover range, why would you take it into these environments? Well, to prove that it can, you know, just to prove that it can. I mean, honestly, I don't think customers would actually do this, but you know, at least they can. If they want to, they can do it. So that's, I think, what this is all about. And um, so we've, we're in, uh, uh, now we're in uh, uh, mud and ruts, and it's automatically raised the ride height of the car. We're in hill descent, which we've got at its lowest setting because uh, it's pretty steep here, and the, uh, the, the, the holes, <laughs> the holes are quite big. So you just have to be a little bit uh, tentative as we go down here. Uh, just sort of feeling our way down this thing. So once again, I mean, you know, it's one of those, it's a Range Rover, so, you know, it's got all the terrain response systems and it's one of those things that takes care of itself. We've got the cameras on uh, off-roading as well. So it's also showing you what the wheels are doing and locking and locking the diffs by itself, but also it's showing you each side of the car. So um, you can see um, where each wheel is going and where it is and in relation to whatever the surroundings are underneath the front of the car or, or on the sides of the car. Um, pretty much handling everything by itself, um, as we already mentioned, um, all good. I mean, this is a Villar, this is a Range Rover, so it's supposed to do this stuff. Um, but honestly, I think it's, it's, it's more fun to be out on the roads chucking this around than, than doing this sort of stuff. 
uh, at low speeds. Still, spectacular view, <laughs> if nothing else. And uh, I can see it's useful because I got a tree trunk on that side and it's useful to have a look there and see how close or how far I am. Pretty good stuff. Okay, so we're now in the P400E uh, plug-in electric hybrid version of the Range Rover Velar. I've got it in dynamic and I've got the gearbox in sports. And uh, let's just see how this thing does. Let's deploy, was it 640 Newton meters of torque? Oh, wow, oh wow, okay, yeah. A little bit of scrubbling there, nice. Yeah, it picks up acceleration really quickly, just as you'd expect. I suspect they haven't, like, you know, I drove the uh, F-Pace with the same engine recently, and uh, probably I'll put the review up here. And uh, that one, the engine noise definitely, I think, was enhanced, and there's a little bit more of the engine noise uh, in that one than there is in this one. But nonetheless, this one certainly matches that one for uh, punch, if you like. So certainly you get the same level of punch when you put your foot down and uh, you get all that power coming through now you do have the modes in this car obviously it's got all those terrain modes as well and i've got it in dynamic mode but you can have so like now we're going through a village i put it back into comfort mode and you can see that the suspension just calmed down a little uh just gets a little bit jittery and the uh like our same thing i noticed in the velar uh diesel um which is also, which is a mild electric hybrid, by the way, that one, so 48 volt assistance in that car. Um, uh, but you know, this is, this is coil suspension, interestingly, because that was air suspension. This one definitely is a little bit more jittery. So I think the air suspension for comfort is definitely better. Um, how it is for off-road, I don't know, we'll find out, I think. But uh, the coil suspension, you just feel a little bit more of the surface. But you know, that's probably good in a, in a sportier, like I said, you know, the, what I call the hot hatch of the Range Rover range. Um, uh, and in the modes you have here, for the plug-in electric hybrid version, you have uh, hybrid mode, EV mode, and save mode as well. I've got it in save mode at the moment because I want to try because it's got about range, uh, showing a range of about 23 miles, full EV range. So I'd like to try that a bit later on. So I'll put it in save for now. Uh, maybe after that, I'll put it back into hybrid and give it a go like that. Um, but I don't think it impacts the performance, certainly not from the uh, demonstration just then. So even on kickdown, I mean, you've got 6,000 R. I mean, I didn't even need to get that far. It's got the juice um, to give you some uh, go at about, okay, so here I am, 4,000 RPM, kicks down and off it goes. But really picks up speed, really stable, really planted, really nice to motor along in this thing. And um, compression and turn, hard on the brakes because we're entering a village. Brakes are very linear, very smooth, good bite as well, um, good response as well, um, as compared to its heavier siblings, if you like. Definitely, you know, very, very nicely done. Uh, how, how that brake reacts, responds, feels really, really good. The steering uh, feels a bit meatier in the, uh, maybe because it's got, I've got it in sports mode, perhaps, but it certainly feels a bit meatier. And um, that's not to say that there's any more feedback or feel coming through, but it's certainly responsive and accurate enough um you know for this sort of thing it really likes to jump off the line i tell you what it takes you a little bit by surprise well i've got it in dynamic mode with sports uh, mode gearbox also in sports mode and uh yeah so at the junction sometimes when you're pulling out it's a bit more uh, uh quick or keen than uh, you might have anticipated good turning good holding on really nice i like this car it's really really good i do wish that maybe they had um up the engine noise a little bit even if artificially like they've done with the uh with the uh with the jag equivalent as well uh anybody concerned or wondering i must just add these are ah, yes they are left hand drive cars your eyes do not deceive you um that's because we are uh this is technically uh, an international uh, event launch um so this for international markets and the cars are from international markets or from european markets so they are left-hand drive even though it's in the uk obviously for covid there's less travel on uh, press events these days so they basically bring the cars to you rather than take you to the cars this is what's happening 
no issues though, not an issue at all. Um, like I said, in the Rilar I've driven before, I find it really nice. I find it a good size, good compact size, especially for around town. Visibility is not an issue. Compact, but without sacrificing anything, you know. I mean, this still feels plenty spacious in here and comfortable, um, you know, and you feel like, you know, you're in something that's, you know, upmarket. I mean, this one has got really nice trim. I don't know if you can make that out, but it's really, really nice soft trim. Really, I don't know what that is, but it's a really nice material that's on there. That is really nice, I like that. And then of course the piano black, uh, kind of, not even piano black, but there's a little bit of wood grain showing through that panel. So it's really nicely done, really posh. <laughs> cool, let's get back to driving this thing because it flows really nicely. Just settles really well, you know? Doesn't move around, I mean, doesn't sort of, the body doesn't lean or roll or anything like that. It just stays very, very well composed. You know, for something of this size, yeah, you can hear the suspension and you can feel the the bump thump. Um, but I, I I trade that I trade that I, I would I I I live with that in terms of you know getting this composure for a car of this type. I think that's a that's a good trade off. So now we're going through uh, town and we are now in EV mode, and it's already dropped to 19 mile range from 23. Very quiet, very smooth. Decent acceleration, no issues at all. Again, that stiffness and ride. You know, something that I found, uh, I think it seems to be a commonality to me from my experience so far with um, electric cars and uh, hybrid cars, uh, a slight stiffening of the, uh, the platforms, I think, that causes the ride to just be a little bit, I hesitate to use the word harsher, but certainly a bit more transmission into the cabin. Um, so I think this is also suffering from the same thing, particularly because this is on uh, coil suspension. Um, I guess so it's more direct anyway. Um, you don't have the air suspension to cushion you. But driving it right now in uh, battery mode, I can see it says EV on the dashboard. The rev is on zero, but it is showing me a blue bar, which I guess is indicative of how it's using the battery power. <coughs> I can see it here anyway. So, so far so good, it's just switched from 19 to 18 and you can see that the batteries are uh, powering the motor, which is powering the uh, wheels. According to this graphic, uh, the motor just here at the front and at the back. So it's got two, is it? Interesting. Uh, whilst I think it's quite clever to have that facility to turn it into EV mode, like if you're in town or you're near a school or something like that, that makes sense. But I think the vast majority of time, and I suspect this will be the case, and I'm going to um, put it into hybrid mode. Uh, and I just, so I can see what's happening here now. I suspect the vast majority of time people, uh, owners will probably leave it in hybrid mode and basically let After it do its own thing. Um, because you, you, know, you, you, you want it to just keep itself topped up rather than plug in. Again, the whole plug in thing, if you have a, a driveway at home and you can plug in overnight, then you can leave with maximum charge. That helps, but otherwise, you know, I don't know, to me it just feels more hassle than it's worth. But um, quiet though. Now, I believe the engine is running. No, it just kicked in there actually. So it was still on UV mode. So it's deciding by itself now what to do. And um, quite refined, just a slight rumble from the ground and through the, uh, uh, through the suspension. But other than that, very smooth. But definitely, even whether in the UK or wherever you are, I think that uh, it makes sense uh, to go for the hybrid version, whether you're going to use the plug-in or not. Um, a, because, you know, this engine is great. <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's two litre. Don't be put off by that. The four cylinder, you think like six, four. Can four be better than six? Yes, it can. So six can be better than... No, no, no. V8s are still king. <laughs> V8s still rule. Uh, but the sixes are slightly starting to go, okay, where do we fit into this whole thing? Although having said that, you know, the earlier car was a six cylinder diesel. Um, but this car seems to combine the attributes of a petrol car and electric car very well. Uh, and also the attributes of a family car and, uh, ooh, and a sports SUV very well That's indeed as well. Now, one of the things I found is that you do get a little bit of understeer, but it's understeer under power. So, you know, just to be a bit uh, tentative about how uh, you apply the throttle through a corner and it's generally fine but it does grip very well and the steering is very good 
and on this rough road again because of the car and the nature of the car it's like <laughs> you know it copes with the undulations and with the bumps and the ruts very very well indeed something that if you were in a hot hatch you might be concerned about or worried about but in this car it ceases to be a problem because you know that it can handle this stuff after all it can do off-roading right so here we are of course a bit of off-roading this being uh range over except that we're on the coil suspension compared to we're doing exactly the same course that we just did in the in the diesel villar uh, and now we're doing it in the petrol one except that now we have coil suspension rather than air suspension again like before got it on mud and ruts and uh, got my hill descent on um, you can certainly feel a lot more now uh, you can actually tell quite a difference between the air suspension and this car uh, this one definitely you can feel a little bit more of what's going on and, and the movements that are taking place uh, beneath you that's for sure uh, just taking it really gently because I don't want to bang it around too much but it seems to be doing all right and again I've got my cameras on as well uh, as before and they do help you quite a lot um, in just being able to see what it is uh, and where you are and what you're doing steep climb up here this one this one is, this is interesting this is the steep climb and uh, this is the bit where you can't actually see in front so now I'm actually this is when you actually start to use uh, this uh, system here because you can't actually see what's in front of you literally uh, because you're facing up into the air you don't know what's on the other side so at least this way you can like here okay so here we go through the, you come over that and it's a sharp come over the ridge and it's a sharp turn and then it's straight into a mud bowl pretty much so fortunately with the camera it, it just helps you a little bit to be able to know gives you a little bit more confidence really I should say um, to, to see where you're going or to know that you know where you're going <laughs> So Range Rover Velar, what do we think of it in 2021? Uh, well, I've always said that Velar is my favorite Range Rover in the lineup at the moment. It's the one I'd get probably, especially living in the UK. Um, and I think that trying these two engines out, I'd say I would probably get the, the P400, this engine, rather than the diesel. That's not to denigrate the diesel, but the diesels are falling out of fashion a little bit. And this one is the performance one, definitely. Um, not convinced about the whole plug-in arrangement, but hybrids are definitely the way to go. So for me, this is the one that makes sense. And it's probably the one that I would get. And I would definitely consider getting one of these. I just like the way it looks. And I like the way it drives and handles. Really good. Nice car. Anyway, let me know what you think of the Velar and uh, what you thought of the video, the review, anything else you want to talk about in the comments about below elsewhere. And I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next video. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. And you know what? Leave a comment and share it if you can. And of course, you're subscribing, right? To youtube.com forward slash browncarguy. Of course, also to browncarguy.com. And follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even on TikTok. Just search for my hashtag. It is hashtag browncarguy. And you know what? If you enjoy my content, you can sponsor it as well. And you can do that at patreon.com forward slash browncarguy. And your name will appear like these gentlemen coming up here on my content at the end of the video in my written text and on some of my Instagram posts and that's a reach of what 350,000 views in total on my YouTube channel 2,000 plus subscribers nearly 8,000 followers on Instagram so you know what if you have something to promote you're most welcome to do that and you can do that from as little as two pounds or two dollars a month the price of buying me a coffee you do that right <laughs> and you can join this incredible lineup coming up on the screen which of course includes Muhammad Humaid over in uh, UAE Partha Srinivasan in India Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK Isaac Boshad over in America, Reza Adil here in the UK, also Mohammed Qasim here, Siraj Abbasi here, Mark Waddell in Canada, Zaka Kogliani uh, over in America, and a dear childhood school buddy of mine, Shahir Haki, also over in America. See your name coming up here? Uh, just head over to patreon.com forward slash brown car guy, and I'll see you all in the next video.